So call me a genius, but the secret there was really in the name. It's called SQL Developer because you develop things. <laughs> Scheduling SQL Developer Reports. How do we do it? Here's the question that came in. We use the reports feature in SQL Developer a lot, but we'd like to be able to schedule them in terms of being able to run them on particular intervals so that they can be distributed to end users. How do we do that? And SQL Developer natively doesn't have that facility. So if you're not familiar with SQL Developer Reports as opposed to just running your own SQLs and spooling the output in, in the normal sort of SQL CL, SQL plus, SQL developer kind of way. SQL developer has the concept of effectively named or constructed reports that you can actually save and, and reuse. So if you go into the view um, tab in SQL developer and scroll right down, you'll see there's one thing, an option there called reports. And when you do that, it brings up a list of reports that either you can build or pre-canned reports, a lot of reports that are already available for you. This is, I think I'm running SQL Developer 22.1 here on this machine. So this is just a screen grab from that. And you can see we ship the product with a number of reports to help you look through your data dictionary, et cetera. But you can create your own in the same way you simply give it a meaningful name, associate a piece of SQL with it. And there's a few bits and pieces as to whether you want it as HTML, et cetera, et cetera, and you're done. And so what happens is, for example, I chose object count there, the object count report. And I simply chose to open it and up there in the far right in my worksheet output, you can see I get the resulting SQL. If I actually go and choose to edit that SQL, etc., you can actually see what the SQL is. The option there you can see, you can also do what we call a save as. You can save a report and that'll save it as an XML file. If you want to schedule SQL developer reports, so there we have what SQL developer reports are, but if you want to schedule them, then you need to come up with some mechanism outside SQL Developer to do it. If you're gonna do that, the first thing you'll need is obviously the SQL that's actually in there. If it's one of the pre-canned reports, you'll need to get it from there or one of your own reports. Yeah, either way, it's the same thing. You wanna locate the SQL. The first thing you do is you would save your report as an XML file and it looks something like this. Now, this is some information there that SQL Developer needs. You can have these XML files and copy them from machine to machine, from environment to environment, et cetera, and import them in as new reports on different machines. But also inside that XML is the SQL that actually used to generate that report. So for the object count report, I've highlighted it there. You can see there's a bit of XML top and bottom, but in reality, the key crux here is the, X, the SQL statement there in orange. It's you know, what you would expect effectively owner, you know, group by, et cetera, et cetera. So if you can locate the SQL, then of course you can now use that SQL in any particular tool. You could simply do it in SQL plus, SQL CL, et cetera, et cetera. So there's my SQL. If I'm going to do it outside of SQL developer, if I'm going to use something like SQL CL, or I'm going to use something like uh, SQL plus, then just having a report like that, having grabbed the SQL out of SQL developer, isn't sufficient because this thing, for example, takes bind variables. And obviously I need to put some metadata in there to decide how I want my reports to come out. So you might do something like this, say in SQL CL, you might say, I want the output to be HTML, not just flat text. And you might, for example, accept a from the pram, uh, from the command line, um, which is basically the ampersand one there, you might say, yep, I'll store that in a bind variable called colon owner. And therefore this SQL can run unchanged. I don't need to go hacking the SQL to make sure it's going to work without bind variables. You can do it. That's option one. Grab the SQL from a pre-canned report in SQL Developer, whether it's came with a product or whether someone wrote it. Save it as XML, go into the XML, find the SQL statement, and then you can simply augment it a little bit to have it run in a command line tool like SQL CL or SQL Plus. Once you've got a command line tool, obviously you can use that with Cron or Scheduler or any particular scheduling tool to run it and do whatever you want with it spool the output out and you can send it off to whoever needs it. Option two is SQL Developer itself actually has a command line interface that is not SQL CL. So let me do a new share and we'll show you that in action. So to run the SQL Developer command line interface in order to access reports, first thing you need to go is you just go to your SQL Developer installation and go to SQL Developer slash bin. That's where the um, executables are on Linux and Windows. And there's this thing here, which is sdcli64.exe. 
This is different to SQL CL. This is effectively a command line interface into the Java engine that runs SQL Developer. One of the options you can pass it is the command reports. And it comes back and says, what are the supported, command, supported options for the report? Is you can use reports followed by commands, so like generate, name the report, give it a database connection, and et cetera, et cetera. You can even pass in bind variables. So if we were to do that, let's do it. Let's go back to my mess enter. So I've given this a run. I've said, do run the report, generate object count by type, and it actually pops up with an error. And I was doing this today and I thought I'll keep the error in just to help you show you what, what to do in terms of solving it. You can see in this case, the report called object count by type actually exists in two places. There are two pre-canned reports called object count by type. The first one's under all reports, data dictionary reports, data administration uses object count by type. And the next one's in all reports times 10 reports, all objects by count. So all that's saying is I wasn't, you know, there was ambiguity in the report that I requested and it spits out your normal sort of Java error. So if I actually say, yep, run the report, all reports, data dictionary, whatever. So I gave it the fully qualified name now. It's firing up a Java engine to run SQL Developer and eventually it's done. It says here that it stored the file in report.html. Let's bring that up. There we go. And it brings up a HTML report much like that. So I just brought it up so you can see what a SQL Developer report looks like. Uh, it's quite nice. It's got a nice little title. It's got some date information and it's got the stuff sort of nicely formatted. So that's perhaps one of the reasons you might choose to use the SQL Developer command line interface to get access to that sort of at least you know, reasonably nice um, sort of output of, of HTML. So that was option two. You can use SD CLI64.exe, which effectively gives you a command line interface into the SQL developer engine in order to run those canned reports. I will say though, and you know, this is not me bagging on SQL developer. I was talking to Jeff Smith, the product manager today about this exact same topic. The clue with SQL developer is in the name of the product. It's SQL developer. Its primary focus is for you to develop applications on the Oracle database. It's not designed to be a fully fledged reporting tool. It's really cool that the reporting facilities are in there, but it's not something like BI Publisher or a dedicated reporting facility. It's great to have, but keep that in mind. If you're, if you're going to start building a massive reporting infrastructure on SQL Developer, I think you'll very quickly hit into the limitations because that's not the primary focus of that product. So option three is to use something which is perhaps more leaning toward the facilities that you're after in terms of reporting, being able to schedule them, et cetera. And one option would be Apex and subscriptions. If you're unfamiliar with Apex, and obviously this isn't Apex office hours, one of the things you can do with pretty much most of the reporting facilities on Apex is you can see down the bottom right here on the attributes of a report, it defaults to off. You can say a report can have what we call a subscription basis. And what a subscription basis is, is let someone run up a region on the screen like an Apex report, but then choose to get it at regular intervals. So for example, once you've enabled that particular report, I built a very simple report here based on the employee table. Once you've done that, you can actually drop to the actions and choose subscription. And when you choose subscription, you get this facility. You said what output format will be, what's the email address, what's the subject, and how often do I get it? Just the fact of running an Apex application, finding a report, perhaps customizing that report as an end user, you know, maybe adding some total or some grouping, you know, shifting the columns around, changing the, seek, the sorting, etc. Once you've done that, you can save that report as a, a named report for yourself, and then you can actually choose to subscribe to it and actually receive it as an email. You know, and there's all these frequencies, etc. So this perhaps is a closer to the end user's requirement now because you've chosen a particular set of output, you've got some facilities to customize it as well, and you can actually get it sent to you by email on a regular basis. So Apex and subscriptions can often meet the needs without having to go a fully fledged scheduling and reporting tool. And probably the next option if you're still considering Apex is Apex and something like a third party facility like Apex Office Print. I'm for Oracle, I can obviously not officially endorse the product, but I know all I can say is we do use it inside Oracle. Um, it's a very popular product and it's just the next level of reporting. Uh, a lot of you know, customization, you can do word templating, et cetera, et cetera, and obviously have schedules as well.